who else? Who should I call up next? How about Professor Marmot? Michael Marmot, where are you? Here you go. Professor of Epidemiology and Public Health at University College London, who's going to talk to us about the health impact of this climate change crisis. Thank you. Uh, the workshop that I chaired was on health equity and climate change. Unlike the previous speaker, I brought my own prejudices to this workshop because I chaired the Commission on Social Determinants of Health set up by the World Health Organization. And I have one simple message to feedback from the two workshops we held, and that is that health equity should be central to deliberations on climate change. I could stop there, but I'll give you some of the argument. And there are two reasons, and I'll elaborate on those. Let me say at once that in the workshop, we took the view that meteorologists and physicists are splendid people. But just as I would say that the health of populations is too important to be left to my profession, medicine, so is the issue of climate change too important to be left to the physicists alone. The theme of this forum, which was echoed in our workshop, is that people matter. Let me say what we meant, what we mean by health equity. I need to emphasize at the outset that health equity and health inequity are not the same as equity in access to health care. Equity and access to health care, very important. Health equity and the inequities in health that we see, we said in the report of the Commission on Social Determinants of Health, arise because of the circumstances in which people are born, grow, live, work, and age, and in the fundamental drivers of those conditions of daily life. We said in the report of the Commission that social injustice is killing on a grand scale. And this is very much echoed in what we were trying to do in the workshop. So let me illustrate what we mean. The good news is that in the OECD countries, life expectancy has been improving about one year in four. Six hours in 24 hours means if you spent six hours at this conference today, you got it for nothing. In India, it's been improving about one year every two and a half years. If you spent 9.6 hours at this meeting today, you got it for nothing. So that's great. The problem is it's most unequally distributed. There's as much as a 50-year difference in life expectancy among countries. Within the city of London, where I live and work, there's a 17-year gap in life expectancy, about one hour cycle ride. So we have these gross inequities, and they're not due simply to inequities in health care. They're the circumstances in which people live and grow. So the first reason for bringing the agendas together of climate change and health equity is that taking action on health equity implies taking action on the social determinants of health, and that implies a fundamental change in the way society is organized, for countries and indeed the way our global society is organized. What I get from the climate change discussions is that taking action on climate change requires a fundamental change in the way societies are organized and indeed the way our global society is organized. If we're going to have fundamental changes for one reason and fundamental changes for another reason, please bring these agendas together. Don't be working on parallel tracks. We said in the Commission on Social Determinants of Health that we wanted to close the health gap in a generation. Isn't that rather similar to the climate change agenda? It was described in our workshop as a slow-burning emergency. We emphasized health equity now. Climate change emphasizes equity across the generations. Let's bring these agendas together. And echoing what Mary Robinson said in the report back from her workshop, this is an ethical, moral issue. We discussed in the workshop whether we should be making the case 
simply on economic grounds. And we said very clearly we should be making the case on moral grounds. Health equity is a moral issue. Climate justice is a moral issue. We called for social justice to deal with health equity. Let's bring social justice to deal with health equity and climate justice together. The second reason for saying that health equity is central to climate change is we have put the argument that health equity is a good measure of how well society is doing in other spheres. If you accept the analysis, and I would argue the evidence is clear, that all the major conditions of society affect health and the distribution of health, health equity, then health equity is a good measure of how we're doing in other spheres. I was in Norway recently. The Minister of Foreign Affairs in Norway said, I am a health minister. He said, every minister is a health minister. I would argue that every sector is a health sector, and indeed every sector is a health equity sector. Climate change will be reflected if the steps that are taken to mitigate and adapt, it will be reflected in health equity and improvements in health equity. Food, agriculture, energy, transport, all key to the climate change agenda, all key to the health equity agenda. So my one simple message is to use the enormous prestige of this Global Humanitarian Forum to make sure that health equity is represented in Copenhagen. The well-being of the world's poor and disadvantaged depend on it. Professor Marmot, thank you very much. And he wasn't in the least bit biased, was he?